in our midst. Fix the immigration system so we can turn it into an economic driver. Deal with the structural fiscal problems that exist because of our entitlement uh, problems that will overwhelm and create way too much debt. If we grow at 4%, people are going to be lifted out of poverty. The great middle that defines our country will have a chance to be able to pers pursue their dreams as they see fit. That should be the great challenge and the great opportunity for the next president of the United States, to forge consensus, to go back to a high growth strategy, and then we'll be able to lead the world. Without a high growth strategy, our country will never have the resources or the, pot, or the optimism to be able to lead the world, which the world desperately needs our leadership. Well, I turned 13, 13 years old two days before Ronald Reagan was first elected. A lot of people forget this, but just a few days before that election, 1980, he was behind in the polls. But I think what changed things was people in America realized they didn't want to hear what was bad about America. They wanted to know how it was going to be better. Ronald Reagan wasn't just a conservative Republican. He was an eternal optimist in the American people. And I am, too. So here's what I think will make America better. We need to live in a world where our children are free, are free from the threats of radical Islamic terrorism. We need to live in an America where we have an economy where everyone can live their piece of the American dream, no matter what that dream is. And we need to live in an America where we have a federal government that's not too big, not, that's not too big to fail, but ultimately small enough to succeed, where we send powers back to the states and back to the people. That's what I did in Wisconsin. When we took on the big government union bosses, the big government special interests, many of whom came in from Washington to spend millions of dollars to try and take me out because we stood up to them. We didn't back down in any of those instances. If you give me the chance as your next president, I won't back down any day, any way, anyhow. I'll fight and win for you and your families every single day I'm in office. I think what this nation can be and must be is symbolized by Lady Liberty and Lady Justice. Lady Liberty stands tall and strong. She is clear-eyed and resolute. She doesn't shield her eyes from the realities of the world, but she faces outward into the world nevertheless, as we always must, and she holds her torch high because she knows she is a beacon of hope in a very troubled world. And Lady Justice, Lady Justice holds a sword by her side because she is a fighter, a warrior, for the values and the principles that have made this nation great. She holds a scale in her other hand. And with that scale, she says, all of us are equal in the eyes of God. And so all of us must be equal in the eyes of the law and the government, powerful and powerless alike. And she wears a blindfold. And with that blindfold, she is saying to us that it must be true, it can be true, that in this country, in this century, it doesn't matter who you are. It doesn't matter what you look like. It doesn't matter how you start. It doesn't matter your circumstances. Here in this nation, every American's life must be filled with the possibilities that come from their God-given gifts. One nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Well, as, uh, as president, I will make this a nation that will solve problems. And how? By having the elected officials and the leaders realize they're Americans before they're Republicans or Democrats. I did it in Washington, and I've done it in Ohio by having the elected officials realize that they're Ohioans before anything else. Secondly, I will rebuild the relationships and show the respect to our allies around the world. We have no choice but to do that. We will be stronger when we are unified and will fight for freedom and for human rights. And finally, give you a little bit of what Carly said. The people that are out there listening, America was never great because we ran America from the top down. America is great because we've run America from the bottom up where we all live in the neighborhoods. One more time in America, we need to revive the concept of citizenship where everybody's actions make a huge difference in changing the world. We have a Holocaust memorial on our state house grounds, and there is one line on there that stands out all the time. If you've saved one life, you've changed the world. We need to adopt that as citizens and rebuild and re-inspire our country. Thank you. I turned 18 in 1980. And my first vote was for Ronald Reagan. Boy, am I glad I did it. 
And I think the country is too. A Christie presidency won't be about me. It'll be about you. Tonight, you sit at home in your living room, frustrated that you play by the rules, you pay the taxes, you do the hard things to raise your family, yet you feel like America's generosity is being taken advantage of, that your system is being gamed, and that you're turning out to fall further and further behind. Our presidency, our presidency, will be about ending that, about enforcing the law, level the play field for everybody, and once again, reward those folks who play by the rules and think that justice means more than just a word, but it means a way of life. And I will tell you this around the world, I will not shake hands with, I will not meet with, and I will not agree to anything with a country that says death to us and death to Israel and holds our hostages while we sign agreements with them. It'll be an America that'll be strong and resolute and will once again be able to stick out its chest and say, we truly are the greatest nation in the world because we live our lives that way each and every day. That concludes this Republican presidential debate. On behalf of everyone here at CNN, we want to thank the candidates, the Reagan Library, and the Republican National Committee. Thank you also to Hugh Hewitt and Dana Bash. The next presidential debate will also be right here on CNN among the Democratic candidates who will face off for the first time on October the 13th. That debate, a partnership with Facebook, will be moderated by my colleague Anderson Cooper. And Anderson picks up our coverage of tonight's debate right now. Before I throw to Anderson, let's have one final round of applause for the candidates. Anderson. Jake, thanks very much. What an evening. Good evening from the spin room as we continue to look at the candidates on the stage. They no doubt they'll be greeting their families who have been listening very closely there in the Reagan Library. It is not over yet. The candidates still on stage. President Reagan's Air Force One, the backdrop, an incredible exchange over the last three hours. We're going to be talking shortly with a number of the candidates tonight as we watch their families uh, start to uh, meet up with them. We're going to talk to throughout as many of the debaters you see now. We'll also be bringing you the high points, the fireworks, fact-checking the talking points, getting some really fascinating real-time audience reaction, breaking it all down for you over the next two hours. And if you missed uh, some parts of this debate, we're going to be showing you the key moments uh, throughout uh, this debate. There you see uh, Donald Trump uh, greeting some of his uh, supporters. I'm here uh, in the spin room with Amanda Carpenter, former communications director for Senator uh, Ted Cruz. Uh, I'm here also with Jeffrey Lord, who served as uh, White House political director in the Reagan administration. He now supports Donald Trump. Anna Navarro, who supports Jeb Bush and is close friends with Marco Rubio, chief political analyst Gloria Borger, John King, host of CNN's Inside Politics, and David Axelrod, CNN senior political commentator and former top advisor to President Obama. David Axelrod, uh, just some quick thoughts. Well, one thought is these people have an iron constitution <laughs> to be standing there for as long as they It was did. hot up there. There was a lot of sweating. Yeah. Three hours. It, it was. was. Cool. It yeah. was a gauntlet that they ran up there. Look, I would say uh, one thing is that Carly Fiorina had a great opportunity tonight. I think she took full advantage of it. She's going to move up in the polls as a result uh, of this. Chris Christie, who was on the verge of uh, falling off this uh, stage, are... had a very strong night, very strong performance tonight. Let's listen in Donald Trump. Chris, go ahead. Thank you for joining us after uh, speaking to your family. What did they say to you about how you were tonight? Well, they were very proud and very happy, and it was a beautiful time. I had an amazing time. Three hours is probably a record-setting long debate, but I guess you're selling a lot of commercials during that because they increased it. I guess it was supposed to be two, but uh, they, they were very professional the way they handled it. CNN did a very good job. Well, we agree with you about, about that. It seems like it was well run. There was a lot to talk about. Who do you think came out on top with the best ideas for the American people? Well, I think everybody really did well. There was nobody that did poorly, and I would think really everybody did very well. I was very impressed. Anybody more than anybody else? Well, I don't want to say that. I think certain people did really well. I would never say that, of course. Uh, Carla Fiorina is getting a lot of good buzz coming out of the debate really, that she well, stepped I, up tonight. I, thought, I think she's a very nice person. I think that really I think everybody did very well, Chris. Do you feel that you did something?